So I'm going to give you a little bit of an overview about what we want to talk about today. And so a couple of things. So one, I'm going to give you some commercials for things that we're not going to cover because we, as much as we want to just dump the truck on you, we can't cover everything with Google Cloud in one day. So I'll give a couple of commercials for things that we may go deeper on at another time. We're going to cover some of the themes that I think we're going to address. So there are going to be some table stakes, right? There's some things that we have to get into, right? Storage, networking, security, et cetera, some things that are foundational to anything that you want to do. We're going to talk about AI on the platform because you have to talk about AI these days. We're going to talk about AI in the platform. So what does it look like when you infuse AI and other stuff you're doing? We're going to talk about AI in your SDLC. And then I'm going to give you a few Bobbyisms. I do get to go around a lot and talk to talk to customers and executives. I want to give you a couple thoughts to kind of set up the day and give you some context. And I want to end with one question that I think will frame where a lot of us are really thinking. So commercial themes, Bobbyisms, and one question, and then we'll get into kind of the real meat of the day today. So one, the first commercial. So for Google, we're not, we don't just see ourselves as just another cloud provider. We support several products that have billions of users, and that's allowed us to mature in a way that's maybe different than some other players, right? We had to have planet scale infrastructure to support people all over the globe at a scale that's typically unprecedented, right? And so what that means is, I won't go into all the details of this, but in terms of our presence around the globe, what that means for networking and compute and options, we've had to be very good at this for a long time. Now, what this also means, though, is that we know that many of our listeners and users can't always use public cloud. And there are also times where some workloads are not a good fit for public cloud. So what does that mean? Because of some of the different things that I have on the slide here, among them regulatory compliance, network survivability, et cetera, sometimes you need a different option than just public cloud. And so what do we do? Sometimes you need hybrid cloud offerings where you might want to mix and match on-prem and stuff in the cloud. And so we want to offer options. And so what we're not going to get to talk about today that I wish we had more time for is what's called Google Distributed Cloud. So when you want to have a cloud-like experience outside of Google Cloud, how do we enable that? And we have a few different flavors of that, right? So we have a software-only option where you can have a Google Cloud-like experience on your hardware. We have a Google Connected option where you can have our hardware that's connected back to kind of the mothership, so to speak, in the cloud. And then we've got an air gap solution. If you're on a, an aircraft carrier or an oil rig or something like that that doesn't have connectivity, so multiple flavors of how you can have a Google Cloud-like experience at your locale. So that's the first commercial for something that we're not going to get to talk about, but we want to plant that seed for those who want to know, what about me if I'm not in the cloud? We have something for you. We just are not going to get to talk about that a whole lot today. The other thing that's really big for a lot of folks is modernization that we're not going to touch on. So you've got maybe some workloads that are VM-based or that are a, a kind of a legacy platform. We do have technology that will help you kind of make the leap to containers and serverless if you want to go that route. Uh, some of the, I see some folks in the room smiling because you've played around with some of this stuff before, but just know that we have technology that can help you kind of discover, assess, translate, and then modernize a lot of what those workloads look like. So just to flash a couple things on the screen, uh, this is a rough flow for how we attack that. We've got something called Migration Center that can look at your entire estate, kind of segment what goes where, talk to you about landing zones. We have tools like Migrate to Containers. By the way, all this tooling is free. Um, to help you actually modernize the workloads, generate artifacts, and actually get you from something like a VM-based architecture to, again, containerized or serverless. And then we have some supported application frameworks, right? So you can see here a list of things that we use quite often uh, in our businesses and in the enterprise, where we've got a full path to get you to containers and serverless if you so choose. Again, sorry, commercial break. We won't get to dive deep into that, but just know for the people online that we do have options around these particular things. Now, having said that, let me give my first Bobbyism just to kind of set up the day. So everything new isn't good and everything old isn't bad. And I think what's happening right now is we often over-rotate towards the new and shiny things and forget that there's a lot of stuff that we knew before we came into the room that actually was very interesting. So for any of the folks in the room or online, if you look me up, you'll see that I made up my own title on LinkedIn. I call myself a cloud therapist. What in the heck does that mean? Well, one, it means I get to define what it means because a lot of people don't have that title. But part of what it means is Google and, and I try to be humble enough to say that there are a lot of good and bad things that happened before we showed up. No therapist has you sit on the couch to talk about them. They're there to talk about you and to listen. And so if nothing else, Google wants to do this. I want to do this. We want to make sure we're listening to what you need and talking about outcomes to see where you want to go. Now, in addition to that, I'll also say that we want to make sure that you can learn all you can, but don't forget all you know. There's a lot of history that came with us into this room, right? So. 
Uh, I live in Charlotte, a.k.a. Silicon South, and we say things a little nicer in the South sometimes. So, for example, we don't say old, we say seasoned. Then that sound a lot better. You got more life marinade, not that you're old. The other thing that I like is sometimes we say legacy workloads. I like vintage workloads because vintage workloads imply something that has value and likely paid our salaries. But the reality is that history means something, right? And so we want to make sure that, yes, we are going to talk about AI today, but we're also going to make sure we ground that and some of the other foundational things you've got to get right on the path to doing AI. We're talking a lot about AI, but that's not the only thing that we're doing. So we want to kind of acknowledge that elephant in the room. With that said, I'd love to give you all kind of my executive summary around where I think AI is in context today, if that's okay. So here's my executive summary for AI. Are you ready for this? Okay, here it is. AI is not the thing. AI is the thing that makes the thing better. AI is not the thing. AI is the thing that makes the thing better. So here, here it is, right? If this were food, AI is not the dish. AI is the sauce or the spice that makes the dish better. The dish typically is the application or the use case for the customer where we're solving a problem to make something better. And the problem is, as much as some of us might like whatever, you know, hot honey chicken sauce or Sri Rach or whatever your favorite sauce or spice is, you wouldn't put that on a plate and call that a meal. And some of us right now in technology are being lazy and taking a bunch of AI stuff and calling that a finished product. The reality is it needs to enhance or make something better. And so we need to talk about still what is it that we're trying to do for customers and make something better? So that's kind of the context. We will talk about AI, but we're going to talk about applications. We're going to talk about enterprise stuff. We're going to talk about a lot of things. I want to give you one more concept, and then I'll get out of your way pretty soon. So let's have an alignment check on kind of where things are. English is very word poor, so I want to give you a little bit of Greek to spice it up a little bit. So there's neos and kanos. They're two different kinds of new, right? English will use adjectives, but other languages like Greek will use different words. The question that we have a lot of times in, in our companies is, what kind of new are we talking about? Do we need new like a new pair of shoes or do we need new like a jetpack? Do we need a new instance of something that we already understand or do we need something totally different, totally fresh, a paradigm breaker and a, something that's shifting the landscape? And so the reality is when it came to cloud, this is my belief, when it came to cloud in the beginning, a lot of the stakeholders of tech thought we were talking Kanos, but we were talking Neos. Now with AI, I think a lot of us are talking Kanos, but Kanos can't be everything. There's a mix of things that we just need a fresh pair of kicks or new instance of, right? And then other times when we need something brand new. So we've got to make sure that we're being creative, we're being inventive, but we're also being realistic. We can't transform everything at the same time. And so we want to give you kind of a balanced diet today, if you will. Talk about the new stuff, talk about the existing things, those legacy vintage things that we need to address. And then we want to make sure that we answer this question, because this is what I think, if I was a listener, this is what I'd want to know. We've always heard about the new thing, the shiny thing, the exciting thing, right? Whether, and I'm not going to name different technologies because I don't want to disrespect everybody, but this thing is going to change the game. This is going to revolutionize everything. And this is the question that I think we have. Have we seen this movie before, or is it going to be different this time, right? <laughs> and so this is what I think we want to talk about. When we have all these new techniques and possibilities and products and features, is it really going to be different or have we seen this before? And so with that said, I want to kind of hand off. I will say throughout the day, you will see this QR code in this link. If anybody has questions about any of the things we're going to talk about today, we'd love to capture your interest. We'd love to have a conversation with you to unpack the things that we talk about today. But we hope this is uh, adding value for you. We're looking forward to questions from the delegates and we hope you have a great time as you hear Google's take on how we remix the old and the new to bring value to you as customers.